Hello everyone, this is Rashida. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about another very popular machine learning model, Random Forest. First, we are going to give you a very high level overview of Random Forest method. Then we will jump into the implementation of a classification model using Random Forest in Python's scikit-learn library. So what Random Forest is? Random Forest is an ensemble learning method very popular for both classification and regression problems and how it works it creates multiple decision trees on different samples of the same data set and takes the majority votes to predict and output for us we are going to see a little picture demonstration of how random forest works in a little bit and as it works on multiple decision trees the model training is much slower than decision trees, but it has shown better results in prediction and that's why it gained so much popularity. As you can see, there are nine decision trees. So this nine decision tree came out of one data set. Each decision tree is built on a subset of the data set. So for the nine decision tree here, nine different subset was taken from the same data set. Each decision tree was trained independently and then you see each decision tree predicted differently. Six of them predicted once and three of them predicted zero. As six of them predicted once, so one is a majority, so the final prediction was one. So that's how random forest makes decisions. So now we're going to learn about few keywords that is associated with random forest so that if you hear about these words or if you're in an interview talking about a random forest, you can use the right keywords. So as we just mentioned, that random forest takes different subset of the total data set and with replacement. So this process is called row sampling and the step of taking this subset of the data set is called bootstrap. The process I described here Aggregating the results of individual decision trees and taking the majority vote, this process is called the aggregation. And the overall technique of prediction that we just described is actually called bagging, which is also known as bootstrap aggregation. So this was my very high level overview of random forest. We are going to focus primarily on the code. I just wanted to give you a basic idea of what random forest is and how it works. Here I'm using a Jupyter Notebook to demonstrate how you can develop a random forest model for a classification. First I import pandas as Pity. I use this hard.csv dataset to create this data frame. We use pity.readcsv method as we did in previous videos as well. And you can see this is the dataset. We have age, sex, chest pain, breast pain, and all these other health parameters. And finally, we have AHD, that means the death event, if this person died or not. So we have only yes or no values. So this is going to be a binary classification problem. We are going to use all these variables to predict the AHD if the death event happens or doesn't happen. Let's look at the data if we need any kind of pre-processing. So we already can see that we have chest pain, then this PAL and the AHD itself. We have all string values and we know very well that our machine learning models cannot read string values. We need to convert them to numerical values. For that first, I wanted to see the unique values we have. For the chest pain, we have four unique values. For tan, we have four, actually three, and look, we have one null value, and then for AHD, we have yes and no, as we already discussed. Now we are going to use the dot replace method, and I'm going to replace these four values with one, two, three, and four. For this tal, we have three, these three unique values. Definitely, we're not going to do anything with the null values here. So just you're going to replace these three values with one, two, and three. And for AHD, we have yes and no values. And for no, I am putting zero. And for yes, I'm using one. String values are all converted to numeric values. 
Next, I wanted to do a complete check on null values. For that, I use this df.isna.sum. This is going to give you the number of null values in each variable in the dataset. And as we can see that we have four null values for this variable CA and two null values for tau. So we have only six null values. Just for the simplicity, what I did is just drop all the null values just using df.drop na method. There are other sophisticated and better way of dealing with null values, but in this case, I'm just simply going to drop the null values. We will talk in details in the future how we can deal with null values. So here we have the df where we already dropped all the null values. Now we need to define our input variables and the target variable. As we already mentioned in the beginning, our input variables are going to be all these variables. This unnamed zero, this is just a serial number. We don't need that. And definitely, this is our target variable AHD. So I'm not going to use as the input variable. So from our DF, if we just drop this unnamed zero and AHD, we will get our input variables. DF.drop columns unnamed zero and AHD. And then the target variable. If we just take AHD from the DF, that's our target variable. And now the train has to split. As we have been doing in all the machine learning methods, we are splitting our data frame in training and testing portions. First, we import train test split method from sklearn.model selection. So x train, x test, y train, and y test they are going to be. We call this train test split method. We pass this x and y that we just created and the test size of 0.4, that means 40% of the data I'm keeping for the testing purpose, and the random state of 5, you can use any other integer of your choice. Now the data is ready. The exciting part, the model development. So for that, from sklearn.ensemble, we import random forest classifier. First, I call this random forest classifier and save it in a variable rf. And just notice, I'm not passing any parameter. That means I'm accepting all the default values first. Let's see what happens with the default values. So then rf, this variable, dot fit, we fit our training data, x train and y train. And the model training is done. Now let's check if our model is working correctly. I'm going to use this rf.score to give us the accuracy score, how accurately the model is doing the prediction. The score method takes both the training features and our true label. So you can see I'm going to check the accuracy on the test data first. I'm passing X test and Y test and we see we have 80.67% accuracy. That means 80.67 times our model could predict the label correctly. Let's see on the training data. And when I check on the training data, that means when I pass X train and Y train to this score method, I get one. That means it predicts 100% accurately. So you can see there's a serious overfitting. Now you will see if we can improve the model a little bit. Now how we can do that? Look here, I accepted all the default parameters. I am not going to do that anymore. I will pass the parameter myself. So now look, what I'm going to do, I will use this grid search CV method. If you watch my videos on decision trees, you already saw how to use grid search CV method. So first, sklearn.model selection, we import grid search CV. The reason I am using grid search CV is I'm going to use four different parameters and for, for each parameter, I want to try multiple values at a time. To do that, I need grid search CV method. Otherwise, I have to keep trying one values at a time, which will be much time consuming and tedious task. So I want to try four parameters and estimators, max depth, max features, and max leap nodes. And estimators mean the number of decision trees. 
the max depth, max features, and max leaf nodes, they are all the same parameters as the decision trees. So for n estimators, I want to try 100, 10, 115, and 120, and max depth 9, 10, 11, 12, and then you can see max features, these four values, max leaf nodes, these four values. I called random forest classifier method again and saved it in RF1. And then the grid search CV, I pass this RF1 and the parameters. Now the model training again. So RF1.feed, X train, and Y train. The model training is done. Let's see the best parameters that we found from this grid search CV method. So we found max depth of 9 max features 4, max leaf nodes 11, and n estimators of 115. Now let's check the accuracy score again. So rf1.score, x train, y train, that gives me 92% this time. Last time on training data, we got 100% accuracy. This time, for training data, it's lower. And then see what happens with the test data. But for test data, we have 80.67, again, pretty much the same as before. So the, for the test data, it didn't improve. For the for training data, it lowered down a little bit, which is not too bad, but I want to improve the accuracy score on test data. So I will try on some more parameters. If you can see, I tried a few different parameters here again. So I define with some new parameters, and then Call random forest classifier again and save it on RF2. Then RF2 equals grid search CV, put this RF2 random forest classifier and the parameters, then the feeding of X train and Y train to the random forest classifier. Let's see, this time we get the best parameters of max depth 8, max features 3, max leaf nodes of 12, and N estimators of 120. Let's check the accuracy score again, and this time for training data we get 93% and for the test data we get 82%. If we check accuracy score on training data improved from 92 to 93%, the accuracy score on test data improved from 80% to 82%. So we got some improvement. But I encourage you to try some more parameters and Try to improve the score some more on your own. I have the link to the dataset in the description box below. Please feel free to check. That's all for today. If this video was helpful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.